We absolutely love open world games here at Gaming Vault, and we're far from being alone in that. From the level of freedom they promise to the amount of content they deliver, there's plenty to love about them. Or, well, at least when they're well designed, that is. At the same time, though, we're also firm believers that there are certain games and certain types of experiences that absolutely should not be open world, either because of their pacing, their focus, their design philosophies, or any number of other reasons. There are some franchises that we feel would lose themselves a little bit if they decided to go open world. Here, we're going to talk about a few such franchises. Resident Evil. Hey, how about you? I can't stay here. It's not safe. Oh shit. Go on ahead. I'll meet you at the station. We quite like the idea of a survival horror game that takes place in a large and open setting and offers the freedom of an open world game. The Evil Within 2 semi-open world sections, for instance, are among the game's highlights, but Resident Evil most certainly isn't a franchise that should veer into that direction. The level design is always a core pillar of any Resident Evil game, and navigating the series' trademark settings with their meticulous design is always a massive part of the experience. Going open world would dilute that massively to say the very least. Resident Evil Village's hub and spoke did, to be fair, boast more open-ended design on a macro level, and yes, the game was better for it, but we wouldn't want to see a Resident Evil game trying to take that design philosophy to its absolute extreme. Dead Space Going from one survival horror franchise to the next, Dead Space is another one that seems ill-suited to open-world design. Atmosphere and claustrophobia are elements that are embedded deep in Dead Space's DNA, and that of course is antithetical to open-world experiences in every way possible. From the Ishimura to the Sprawl, this is a series that has built its identity around putting players in expertly crafted and horrifically realized settings, and it's hard to imagine a Dead Space game that manages to achieve that while also being open world. Splinter Cell Splinter Cell lives under constant threat of being turned into an open world series, and while an open world stealth game is certainly not the most alien idea, that might not be what most people want to see from Splinter Cell. This is a series that has always been laser focused on its set of stealth mechanics, with levels that are handcrafted around the idea of getting the best out of those mechanics. Is that doable in an open world setting? Sure, but there's a good chance that it would lose a lot of the focus that Splinter Cell is known for. The Last of Us Naughty Dog sits on top of the food chain when it comes to linear games, but the studio has, of course, flirted with more open-ended design with its games in recent years. The Last of Us Part 2, for instance, featured sections with a greater focus on exploration and optional content, though as good as that was, we wouldn't want to see a fully open world The Last of Us game. Storytelling and the pacing of the story are the heart and soul of these games, and retaining that on the same level is next to impossible in an open world experience. Would we want more semi-open world sections in The Last of Us Part 3 though? Absolutely. Uncharted Naughty Dog's experiments with semi-open world chunks in largely linear games kicked off with Uncharted 4, while The Lost Legacy also followed in its footsteps, and in true Naughty Dog fashion, both games' open-ended sections were excellent featuring plenty of engaging exploration and side content. A fully open world Uncharted, however, eh, would be probably the worst thing in the world. And we're not only just slightly exaggerating. This is a series that's known first and foremost for its cinematic set pieces and its breakneck linear action. Turn Uncharted into an open world game, and you lose almost all of that. At which point, it's not really an Uncharted game anymore, is it? Portal If Valve does ever decide to make another Portal game again, it's highly unlikely that it would decide to make it open world. 
But if for some bizarre reason it does come to that decision, it'd be hard to see how that would benefit the franchise in any way. Portal and Portal 2 have received non-stop praise for how densely they are packed with ingenious puzzles in tight, handcrafted space, and that, many would argue, is what Portal should always be about. Half-Life Moving on from one Valve franchise to the next, Half-Life is yet another series that would lose a lot of itself if it ever did design to abandon its linear roots. This is a series that has consistently emphasizing story and storytelling that is blended with incredibly designed linear gameplay in a way that very few other franchises do. Admittedly, there is still a way to make that kind of formula work in a more open-ended structure. Just look at how perfectly Metro Exodus struck that balance, as an example. But Half-Life feels like the sort of franchise that will always be at its best when it's delivering guided, authored experiences. Dishonored Honestly, until quite recently, if someone floated the idea of an open-world Dishonored game, plenty of people would probably want to see something like that happen. Recent events, however, have massively shaken our collective confidence in Arcane's ability to craft a compelling open-world experience. Redfall doesn't excel in any of the ways you'd expect an Arcane title to, but it also doesn't do the whole open-world thing very well, so if the studio did ever get around to making a Dishonored 3, we'd much rather just see a game that sticks to the immersive sim framework of its predecessors. Wolfenstein At this point, it's hard to say if we'll ever even get a new Wolfenstein game, but if we do, hopefully it won't be an open-world title. The series tried its hand at semi-open world structure with Wolfenstein Youngblood, which ended up being one of the game's many issues. With The New Order, The Old Blood, and The New Colossus, the franchise delivered three excellent linear, narrative-driven shooters, and if machine games did ever get around to making a Wolfenstein 3, we'd want to take that same approach. Max Payne Like a couple of other franchises that we've spoken about here, Max Payne is a series that puts a ton of emphasis on narrative, and while you can obviously tell compelling stories in an open world game, it's next to impossible to do it while maintaining the kind of pacing that a Max Payne game needs to have. A healthy blend of riveting cinematics and slick and adrenaline fueled shootouts in tightly designed levels is what Max Payne should always be. Thankfully, with Remedy's upcoming remake of the first two games, this is exactly what we're going to get. Hey, did you know that we at Gaming Bolt upload new videos every day? Stick around, drop a like, subscribe, and hit that bell, and let us know what kind of content you'd like to see in the future with a comment below.